All right. Well, the good news is we can start to ask those questions now because we are joined by Mr. Football himself, Brian Baldinger. Baldy, how are you? Hey, I'm doing good, guys. You know, I'm like everybody else. I'm excited about Super Wildcard Weekend starting in a couple of days. Did you have to, like, steal yourself to watch the film from, from Sunday? Did, could you even bring yourself to do it, or did, did you have to be like, all right, everybody, this is about to be like a horror show. Get ready. Like, cover your eyes. How, how bad was it? Well, it was bad if you wanted to just tell the truth. It was bad. You know, I mean, if you just want to just tell the truth about what's wrong. I, I didn't tell the whole truth. I did some things out there, but because um, it's not my job to like, I mean, that's what the coach's job is, is to tell the truth. And I don't know that anybody's telling the truth over there about, you know, how hard they're playing, if they're in shape, do they communicate? Does the right hand know what the left hand is doing? I mean, there's just some things, you know, if the other team is calling out the plays before they happen, maybe there's something a little bit predictable about what they're running. So all those things are happening. And, and so I, I, I was going to ask you about defense there, but in terms of like calling out the plays before it's happening, what do you see about the predictiveness of the offense? Is, 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 is that what you're referring to? And is that something that needs to be fixed going into this Bucks game? Well, there's a lot of things that need to be fixed, but I mean, you know, by formation and by personnel, they do certain things. You know, Jack Stoll's on the field. There's certain formations. If Calcaterra's on the field, there's certain things that they do and don't do. I mean, there's just things from a formation standpoint and personnel standpoint that um, are, are pretty easy to figure out. But, you know, the biggest thing, honestly, Zach, when I watched him, like, it was just odd to me. Like, there's only one thing Wink Martindale does, and we all know it. We all know he's going to blitz, he's going to pressure, and it's coming. It's just coming. So what's your answer to it when it comes? And honestly, it looked to me like they weren't anticipating it because they didn't have an answer. And so that's when Jalen's running all over the place and generally just throwing the ball away, um, but really not running a play. And it just – I had to corroborate that just with some people. But, like, I watched all the blitzes. I'm sure you did too. Like, what was the answer to it? Because it's coming on Monday night. We know what Todd Bowles is going to do. Um, so it's just – it's kind of a head-scratcher when they say, we got to work harder, we got to do this and all that stuff. Well, all right. Great. That, you know, you hope that you do that, but are you working smart? Are you working on the things from a game plan standpoint that's going to help you win the game? Because I didn't think they did that last week. It's bizarre. I, I cannot believe that we are still here after week 18 talking about, like, why don't they have a plan for the Blitz? They're the most Blitz team in the league. As you said, if there's one thing you're going to spend time on in the week leading up to a Giants game, it's, okay, what are we going to do against Wink Martindale blitzing like every down? And I remember, and, <laughs> I remember Wink, like this summer, I'm, I'm pretty good friends with him, but, you know, he was telling me he, he was going to blitz Aaron Rodgers in preseason in that Jets-Giants game just to see what Aaron's response to his looks was going to be. Like, he's always looking to find an edge from your protections or how, you know, and, and generally the Eagles – didn't block some of the overloads really bad. I mean, they got a couple of free hitters coming at them, but for the most part, they actually did a decent job of picking it up. It's not like um, the Giants have great pass rushers. I mean, Malata and Lane, they were in good shape, but the overloads and some of the things that they did uh, to, to not have an answer. Is, you know, I mean, look, Jalen's and his interceptions, eight of them are against the Blitz this year, you know, and so it's coming, you know, and the mistakes will probably ensue. It did last week. The Xavier, Second Xavier McKinney interception, the first one, whether the one on the sideline, I mean, that was Okareki coming right in his face. And, you know, he threw the ball up for grabs like that. And we know what Todd Bowles likes to do. We've seen him do it against the Eagles earlier this season. We saw him do it against the Eagles in the postseason two years ago. I guess what do you expect from this Eagles offense to try to counteract that Todd Bowles blitz? Well, there's some basic blitzes, Zach. I mean, there's different ways to pressure. But there's some basic overload pressures. You're going to be a man short. Like you got to have a sight adjust. You got to have a hot read. You got to have a place to go. Like the receivers got to see it. The quarterbacks got to see it. And you can see teams that have an answer. You see them like teams don't want to blitz them because they have the answer. And so you don't see a lot sometimes. So, I mean, Todd has every blitz imaginable, and then some that we've probably never seen before. Um, I mean, Antoine Winfield will come on a blitz from the free safety position. I mean, they could come from anywhere. Um, they could line up with, you know, five guys on one side of the ball. 
And that could be just a diversion to bring pressure from the other side. So at least everything is up. And if I was Jason Kelsey's, if I was, you know, Jalen, if I was Nick, if I was, you know, all these guys, I'd sit and watch this blitz reel a whole lot this week just to make sure that we have answers when it comes because it's coming. And what, what kind of answers are out there? Um, you know, is it uh, we've, we've, we've seen basically it's the, the quick screen to the wide receiver, you know, th- those horizontal passes, which have not worked very well. Uh, we've seen very rarely them take the shots deep downfield. We saw it against Arizona when Devontae dropped that ball. I thought that was good process. What, what other answers could there be for them? Well, I mean, you can always, uh, you know, run the ball. That always takes a <laughs> that's like the first answer. Um, you know, you can hold the snap count. You can have a lot of dummy calls where you can kind of get them leaning and, and showing the blitz. I mean, that's what Brady did to him in the playoff game a couple of years ago. I, I mean, when uh, Stafford did it to him, uh, threw the ball to Cooper Cup on, you know, they, they screwed up the blitz, but it was a blitz zero. And they got the ball to Cooper Cup past the safety. And it was a difference in a game. They kicked the winning field goal. Um, you, so there's things you can do with the snap count just to kind of hold it and maybe get them to show their hand a little bit. So that, that so you can kind of give an idea. Uh, you can have instead of just running these nonstop vertical routes that they run, um, you can have some built-in short routes. You know where it doesn't have to go twenty yards down the field. So there's a lot of options and there's a lot of answers. But this would be a good time to like put them into play. You would think so. If I can shift the attention to the defense, you know there was a lot of talk last week about Hassan Reddick dropping. And then literally the first two plays of the game, Hassan Reddick drops as if yeah. uh, this coaching st- is. So I'm I'm trying to figure out what is it that I'm missing across the board because when I watch this defense, it doesn't seem like this scheme is is uh, is consistent with what the players are trying to play. You know, I, I I gave the anecdote. I went back and I watched that Week Three game against Tampa Bay, and it looked like the Eagles played an entirely different defense that day. Uh, there was communication. They they knew what they were doing. There was pressure. Um, you know, it, it, it really seemed to be a coherent scheme. So what are you seeing from the Eagles in the, in particular, these past two, three weeks and how do they fix it? Well, Hassan Reddick is a dropping Zach if they're in a four man front and he's a defensive end outside linebacker, he, he is going to drop and, jo- and Josh Sweat did last week as well on the other side when they're in a five man front, because you need somebody to cover the flat, depending on what the coverage is. And so that's what Hassan's doing, but there's a ways to work around it. Um, but, you know, T.J. Watt drops into coverage, you know, in certain looks. I mean, these guys do it, and Max Crosby never does it. But you can flip you can flip guys to, you know, have another guy drop, you know, in that particular look versus formations. Um, there's ways to kind of get around it uh, so that you're not taking your best pass rusher and putting him in the flat. Um, but in a four-man front, I mean, they're in a five-man front, presumably, to stop the run, um, to help stop the run. You know, they're not, they're not particularly good. They're trying to protect their linebackers, which have been just horrible and run fits, as we know. And so I think you you might have to like say, okay, let's put let's just play a four man front. Tampa doesn't run the ball particularly well to begin with. They don't get great movement at any of the point of attacks and any of their combo blocks. So let's just play a four man front. Let's you know, I mean, whether Jordan Davis plays, doesn't play. I mean, he's sort of their nose tackle in most of these fronts. But like, let's play a four man front. And let's put our four best pass rushers out there. And let's make us make what I would say is active, so I can be clear. Like, make run the Eagles out of that four man front. Hmm. That's what I would do. I agree with that. And you would think that one, one problem with that is you, you need somebody else in there because those linebackers have been so bad. And the loss of Sidney Brown, I think, affects their ability to do that. We'll, we'll see what kind of answers Matt Patricia has. In terms of the Bucks' offense, Baldy, what, what should they be prepared for? Well, I mean, Mike Evans is all world. And so, um, you know, if red zone, like, they're going to take a shot to Mike Evans. He's got 13 touchdown catches. Um, you know, he's a deep ball threat. He still runs really, really good. Uh, he's a big target. You know, so you better be in great position on him because he draws a lot of penalties because guys, you know, they get their hands on him. They, they come over the back of him. He's a big target that runs good. So that's that's their number one option. And Godwin isn't putting up the type of numbers that he has in the past, but he's a good number two. Baker's going to throw it to the open guy, uh, mostly. Uh, he, he reads things pretty well. This Trey Palmer can flat out run. They run a variety of formations, a lot of bunch formations. This Dave Canales is 
is pretty, uh, you know, he, he's pretty creative. You'll see two tight ends and Kate Otten and, and, uh, and their guys and, you know, twin sets and the twin set wants you to kind of reveal if you're a man, or if you're in zone, if both corners are over, it's probably man. So that's kind of an indicator when they're in their twin set opposite the two tight ends. So, uh, you know, there's an old saying, like, if you know the formation, you know the play. And I think that's pretty true with Tampa. Rashad White, is, White has played better um, over the last six weeks. He's had a couple of really good games. They've got the same five guys now for the last – I know um, Matt Filer was left guard in week three. He got hurt. Aaron Stinney came in. And since then, they've literally lined up the same five guys for at least the last 10 or 12 weeks in a row. So they have continuity now. Tristan Worse early on was still trying to figure out left tackle. He's playing at a much higher level right now. He's back to being Tristan Morris right now. So, um, but you look, Gedeke and some of these guys, I mean, you should win some one-on-ones against this group. Yeah, I, I was going to ask you, it's it's a, a nine-win team that the Eagles handled it in week three. The Eagles are are favored on the road despite playing like crap here, the, you know, five of these past six games. Um is this a good matchup for the Eagles, as 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 good as, as as one can be this time of year? Is this a matchup Eagles fans should be worried about outside of the way the team's playing itself? Well, Zach, I mean, look, Arizona didn't – I mean, Arizona was shocked at how good they played against the Eagles. I, was, I talked to Monty Austin for, for the game. Like, there's just – he was just going into this game looking for building blocks for next year. To see them whip the Eagles like they did, run the ball like they did, I mean, he, he wasn't expecting that. And then to see Tyrod Taylor basically throw for 300 yards against them, I mean, you know, it's disappointing. Uh, so I think it's still the best matchup. Like, I'm thankful they're not playing the Rams, you know, and they're not playing a team at Green Bay. Um, this is the best matchup they could get. They can win this game. There's no question they can win this game. And, and maybe it'll quiet the crowd a little bit. And maybe uh, all the players will say, I told you so. Okay. Um, it's the best matchup. It's it's the most winnable of the matchups that they could have this weekend. Baldy, I'm going to ask you a very selfish question because I know that you are a man who knows many things. Do you have any any, any advice for a, a sore back? Yeah, well, um, you know, it, it, the, the body is a pulley system. So you got to strengthen the core to get rid of the bad back. And then, you know, you got to you got to stretch. You got to stretch all the time. Can you touch your toes with your palms on your hand? No. <laughs> Oh yeah, well, we got it. So put your so bend down, stand up. I can do it when I'm sitting up. here. But no, yeah. no, stand up and bend your knees and put your palms on the on the ground. Okay, right like now, just like just <laughs> like 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 this, and then <laughs> like basically you got to open up your hips. You got to open up your hips right there. Okay, gradually, but keep the palms flat on the ground, and then straighten one leg. You know, bend one leg, straighten one leg. One, and 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 you got to. I mean, that's what I would do, but I would do, you know, I would, I would go start at maybe 1000 crunches a day, like just okay. start working yeah, on the core. <laughs> yeah. And then build it up to two, 3000 crunches. It takes 20 minutes, but it's a good 20 minutes. So I, this is, this is what I need. I need this kick in the butt. Or well, the back. Thank you very yeah. much. If, if, if I can sneak one more question in, um, yeah, because yeah, yeah. The, the question I, I, I keep getting, I hope is, it's about banana. No, it's, 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 I have a question for you. I have a yeah, question. Yeah. Like you're, you're a very good reporter. I see your questions in some of these press conferences when I read it. And do you ever feel like you get an honest answer? Very rarely. Great, great question. Yeah, very rarely. I, I mean, very rarely. It bothers me on your behalf that what you get from Nick and his staff is what, which is nothing. Yeah. So I, so I, I, I can tell you what I'm trying to do sometimes there. Short of getting an honest answer is getting. That question on the record, right? Because okay. so so you know you. so you know. All right, they've been asked. You know, are you making staff changes or or yeah. or, or like what you see from Jalen in this situation? So you have that benchmark to refer to uh, when you go back to it. I got you. Okay. Uh, my, my 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 last one for you and is I I keep hearing if the Eagles win this game, how can they avoid San Francisco? And the way they can <laughs> avoid San Francisco is if is if obviously Green Bay wins or the Rams win. Uh, Either of, of those scenarios, do you think that could happen this weekend? Do you think that the underdog could win in, in either oh, yeah. of those other two games? I mean, I, I, I think the Rams are the most dangerous team in the <laughs> NFC. So uh, I, I, I think that they can absolutely go to Detroit and win. In fact, I'd be surprised if they don't. 
Um, and not take anything away from Detroit. Rams are just playing great football right now. And uh, their running back is legit. Their emphasis on the run game, the way they rebuilt their offensive line, uh, all the things. It's It, it looks like a well-coached football team. And look, I, I mean, Green Bay is playing good football. Like Dallas some days looks unbeatable. And then some days you, they look vulnerable. So I don't know. But there's a lot of pressure on Dak Prescott to go play great at home in this game against a team that um, is so young uh, and they're having so much fun, uh, starting with Jordan Love, that, you know, and, and they're well, really, really well coached. I mean, they're, it is a really talented and creative offense that LaFleur has put together. So, but I think the Rams look like they're ready to go to Detroit and win that game. Man, what a heartbreaker for Lions fans to have Matthew Stafford come in and beat them in this this great season of theirs. And then for Mike McCarthy, if he loses to the Packers, tough. I mean, the, the storylines, they just write themselves. We don't have to go create them. They're already being written right now. It's 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 fantastic. Well, Baldy, thank you so much. Thank you for the advice and the insight. We will um, okay. we'll talk to you later. Yeah. We really appreciate it. All right. Maybe after a playoff win Monday night. Okay. Got you Fingers back. crossed on, on Fletcher Cox's behalf. Thank you, Baldy. <laughs> 